Uh, massive news out in the wake of Magello. We all thought maybe news of this ilk was on the way around Magello time. I mean, the suggestion was that it would be around Magello time. But usually when they're like, oh, it's coming after Magello, they're like, oh, you know, there's three weeks till Assen, so let's just give ourselves a nice little three-week break there to... Uh, make a decision. The boring old Magello test has just been nothing but fireworks, apparently, all of a sudden. With confirmation, signed sealed delivers, the ink is dry, here we go, confirmed. Jorge Martin is signed for Aprilia. And we are now this speculation starts going about, obviously, that means Mark to the factory Ducati, obviously, you know, we're just waiting on an announcement for that now. And then, this morning, <laughs> I'm just sit at work, have a little flick through on the phone and I'm seeing Anaya Bastianini, Anaya Bastianini's manager uh, in an interview, and I think it was like Italian radio or something, saying that he's going to be on a KTM next year. Uh, so we're assuming that is with a factory bike in the Gas Gas Tech Toi team. Pedro's current ride, we would suggest. Now, while I was a little bit on the back foot with getting a video out like this to talk about this news with you, um, because for like the first time ever, doing videos and like a race wrap after the race which you can watch up here somewhere i've actually got it filmed on the sunday afternoon which i never do i never i always get to sunday afternoon i'm like oh, i can't be asked i'll do it monday or tuesday sometimes later in the week like before i get these videos out and because i've got it filmed so quickly i was halfway through uploading the video when the martine announcement came so i had to just jump on here today and just give a short rundown of my thoughts my initial thoughts about what's going on the dominoes have started to fall lead domino now being we thought it was going to be mark it's actually martin but indirectly it, it is it is still kind of mark because the only way that this deal happens is if martin's been told he's not getting the factory ducati c he's not gonna be in red next year and that could only mean that mark's in red next year especially since we're now hearing bastianini to gas gas right ktm so were we all a bit naive I mean, because I was one and there were many others uh, suggesting that Mark's looking so happy and his Grassini ride, he's just he's, he's plucky little team that could run around on old spec machines and just love and life, the uh, low pressure environment of a satellite team. And maybe, you know, we were suggesting that like he'll just happily just sit there and let, let Martin will have the, the red bike and all the latest shit. And he'll just be like, yeah, just as long as I've got a 25 bike, just leave me in one of the, I'll just go to Pramac or, you know, uh, Grissini, State Grassini. As long as I've got the latest bike, I can do the business. Were we a bit naive in thinking that that would have been a nice solution for Ducati? Because as soon as Pushka has come to shove, Mark's got his claws out and he's going, I'm the top dog in this field, mate. I am the top dog. I'm wearing red or I'm going somewhere else. And he's forced Ducati's hand so yeah, Ducati have, have decided that Mark's the one they wanted. Mark's the one they'd rather keep. Uh, if they were going to lose any of them, they'd prefer it was Martin and obviously Bastianini. And while there was this like suggestion that there's somehow, again, were we being naive? Somehow there was this way that Ducati got to keep all three. You know, I know Mark said the other week that there was no way he's going to end up at Pramac. But before that, I mean, the obvious solution for everybody was it was going to be like a Mark... Bastianini, Pramac squad on later spec bikes, or maybe Mark stayed at Grassini on a 25 spec bike, and Bastianini goes into Pramac, and Martin gets the job because he's earned it, and we're all one big happy family in red. I just feel like like we must have been a little naive there to think that that was a possibility, because all three of these guys have had it in their head the whole time that if they don't get the top job, they're out of there, and this shows it. I'm sure... Mark goes to KTM or Aprilia if they tell him they want Martin to have that ride uh, and him to wait and potentially just have a later spec bike in a satellite team. And it's just, it's I think it's kind of amazing that they've all not decided that they don't want to settle for anything less than what they thought they deserved. And you know what? In terms of Bastianini, especially maybe more so Martin, big, big props to him because, and he's gone up so much in my steam here because he's basically said, look, I know you've got, the option of a six-time world champion. Still, I think I deserve it more than him. So if I don't get it, I'm gone. And as soon as... He, I'm, I'm telling you, he just got told that day, probably, that they were like, look, we've kind of changed our tune on this, but Mark's pressing us on it. We're going to give it to Mark. And he's going, that's great. See you later. And he's walked down to Aprilia and signed on the dotted line. Like all... It must have all happened within 
So fair play to him. Fair play. If this is true about... Now, the Bastianini thing is interesting because nothing official yet. He's not said anything, but apparently his managers come out on, you know, Italian radio or something and said that he'll be on a KTM. So I can't imagine that's not the case now. Otherwise, it's a weird lie to tell. Even if you are just trying to hard bargain, you'd probably say something more like we have offers from this. We are talking to them, whatever. Just being like, no, he will be on that next year kind of suggests to me that he's going to be on that next year. So we're assuming that's a gas gas. Binder, I don't think they'll move across just to get Bastianini in. And if Bastianini's happy with that, then everybody wins. But this dream scenario, like I said, of this Ducati happy family where they all stayed together, or at least even keeping two of them happy, where you thought there was always a potential that they'll but that Bastianini was going to get the offer from Aprilia, which was the talk, because he was going to be told that he was getting moved on. Martin was going to get his spot. And then Mark was going to get a 25 spec in a satellite team. And, you know, look, two out of three ain't bad, right? They get to keep two out of three. Now that I, th- like, and I was one of those people that thought they could get that done. But now I feel like, am I an idiot? Like, of course, Mark is factory team or nothing factory team or nothing he only took the Grassini ride because he had to get out of the Honda and from then on he was always going to be like the next move for me is a factory bike that I can win on and I'm going to try and win the world championship in either orange black or red that was it there was nothing else for him and as soon as it was like oh happy families can we do this with you he was like how about you do one and you, you might say that's fair enough you know all like I said with all three of these guys if you're a factory level rider like there's a bastion he's on the factory seat you don't want to give it up Martin thinks he's deserving of it, second in the World Championship last season, leading this season. He's not settling for anything less, and Mark Marquez is Mark Marquez. He's not taking anything less than a factory ride. But more interestingly as well, I'd like to know where your guys, where you guys like heads are at on this. Like, What's your thoughts on it? What would you have done? What would you have done? I think there would be a lot of people in Team Martin's camp here, younger, hungry, not that the others aren't, but and, and performing, and performing. Like He's really getting a lot out of that, and it's a safe bet for Ducati to just go well here's a guy that we know can ride the bike why don't we just put him in the factory team it's done easy so a lot of people would have I think still now when you when you look at it may maybe will think that would be the better option and there'll be people obviously in the camp that's like well it's Mark Marquez you know and that's literally the the argument that's the argument it's like well first of all not doing as well this season but it's first year on the bike and if he had a latest spec bike would he be potentially and also proven winner and then there's also all this stuff about like how it's a bigger marketing thing for you as well because mark marquez is the biggest name in the sport that's currently riding you know which camp would you sit in i'm still not sure what i would have done which for people who are in the mark marquez camp i think just sounds crazy to them that people would consider anything else but yeah like when you're looking at what's mark gonna be next year 32 or so which the age doesn't really mean much to me if you're still performing you're still performing but You can get that thing where all of a sudden you get to 32, 33, 34, and the cliff thing happens, right? Where it's unpredictable. We don't know where it comes from. Some athletes just hit a wall. Some go on forever, like a Novak Djokovic or something. You see it with footballs and all sorts of things. Uh, So that can happen. I'm not saying it's going to happen to Mark, but like I said, some athletes are just built different and they'll just stay at that level until they retire at like 38. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is there's the unpredictability of an older guy that you hit that cliff or as though with a Martin in his, what is he, mid-20s or whatever. That's definitely not a thing in the near future for you. So you could have him there for five, six years and he could be riding around at the top level for five, six years. So in that respect, that's where I'm assuming the Martin people will come from. And also the people that might just say he's quicker at the moment. Like right now, I'm not talking about peak Marquez or whatever, but right now, both of them on track, there might be there'll be people saying that he's just quicker. So tell me where you are at in this decision thing. Would anybody, anybody out there, jump in the comments, would anybody have stayed with Bestia? I'm assuming it's not many, right? But yeah, I think the thing for people is you've potentially lost two young talents to please an old one. Granted, granted an exceptional old one. But that's what you've done. They can always dip back into the world, can't they? If it's going shit for the other two at the other places, you can always sort of like bring them back into the family, I suppose. But you never really, once you get done, like sent from a factory team, get brought back into that factory. Like, does that ever happen? You can find other factory rides, but you don't ever get that one again, I don't think. So there's that. And then I guess on the other end of the spectrum, uh, not would you, what would you have done if you were Ducati, but what would you have done if you were Martin? You know, would you go to Aprilia? Aprilia, I think, looks like a good fit for him the bike i mean you say the bike isn't at that level it's probably just off 
But do we really know that? Because we think we've got an underperforming Vinales and we think we've got an older Leish, right? Who maybe wasn't getting the most out of it. Both of them not getting as much out of it as they can. Is the bike closer than it looks? I mean, we know when they get it right, Vinales did it once this season. When he did get it right that one time, he was amazing. If you think is the missing piece of the puzzle, a guy that is at the elite level, you know? So this could, maybe this is a great move. If you're Martin, are you better off staying on a Pramac 25 spec Ducati and trying to win the championship like you could still win it this year you can go back to back as a satellite rider but I also understand the fact that there's a bit of pride involved and a bit of ego and if you're the world champion or if you're the best for your manufacturer or whatever or at least competing with the with your factory bikes for your manufacturer then you should be on that bike if you're Bastianini does this make sense to you would you take a backward step to a Pramac or something or do you go to a satellite KTM? Because he's not even going to another... We don't think it's going to be another factory ride. We think it's going to be Pedro and Binder, and he will be on the gas gas with potentially like, I don't know, a Miller or whoever they end up signing. With the view that if you perform, like for example, what Pedro's done this season to that level, and Binder's still having a bit of a shit one next season, he does his, his level doesn't lift, then all of a sudden you're on the factory bike, and now you're a factory rider again, with a point of difference from the Ducati, that maybe on the same bike you can't beat Peko, but on a different bike, if they get it right, you you can beat him so three things yeah i want to know i mean the mark thing is the mark thing you're not settling for a satellite ride again you're in the factory or you're moving on i don't need to know what you do in that situation because he just pulled rank and he got what he felt he deserved and he got what he wanted with the other two with them not having the big name behind them and the success behind them like mark does they actually had to give ultimatums and then they had to decide if they wanted to follow through on those ultimatums what would you have done is a gas gas Tech 3 KTM better than taking a step back from a factory Ducati. And then we saw Jack Miller do the same thing. You don't step back from it. No one seems to want to do that. You just you just go somewhere else. And I'll compare it to Miller, even though he got the factory ride, because the KTM was not looking good at the time. It was looking pretty bang average. And then to go to the KTM as it is now in the Tech 3 or the Tech 3 side, this is actually a better prospect almost than what Jack did, because the, you know the bike can run at the front. Anyway, and then if you're Martin... Obviously, do you look across at Aprilia with what I'm assuming is a very healthy offer and go, yeah, I could I could do something with that bike? You know, he's been talking to Aleish and Aleish is going to him. Yeah, to be fair, we're not at our best. That thing probably is as good as that or close to. I think if you were on it, you'd win. Then he's gone, well, fine. Let's see how we go then. But anyway, let me know what you think. That's that. I, I want to know what you would have done in all three of those situations. If you're Ducati Management, if you're Jorge Martin, and if you're an A.A. Bastianini, would you make these moves? Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.